Hi, I'm Josh McDowell, and how I wish I could be there with you at your prayer event in South Korea. You know, and when I speak about things here today, I'm going to speak globally. Why? Because everywhere you go, you see the results of South Koreans praying and South Koreans evangelists and ministry all over the world. I don't know what the world would be like without the Church of South Korea. So I want to give you seven simple things. I won't be able to go into detail on many of them. We only have a few minutes. But things you need to inform yourself on in order to counsel today. Because these seven issues are not problems. They're not threats. They're not things to fear. They are challenges to the church. Meaning that these are issues in every culture of the world. And if the church is not prepared to counsel on these seven areas, they will lose out and probably end up hurting people. So I just want to briefly go through these seven. Now, you're going to have to educate yourself on it because we don't have time to do that. But you can. It would be easy with the internet and all to define these things and see how you need to counsel. So let's go down through it. Probably the biggest one is loneliness. Loneliness. Do you know that more people die from loneliness than depression and anxiety combined? That's how huge it is. In my country, about 7,000 people a day die from loneliness. Yet, we have the smartphone, we have the internet, we have travel, everything. And yet, people are lonely. And one of the reasons is, because of the cell phone, we're connecting, but we're not relating. We're not relating. And... <clears throat> Then the fourth one is depression. This is a major global <coughs> challenge to the church, depression. You must prepare yourself to counsel people on depression. Because if you don't, you won't know how to handle it. You won't know how to discern when they're asking you a question. What's really behind that question is depression. Uh, and so I encourage you to study that. And then, fifth, anxiety. Anxiety. The fear of the unknown. The frustration, the inner conflict of the unknown. And um, anxiety is causing so many deaths today. Then another is mental health. Who ever dreamed? that in this century, globally, mental health would be one of the major challenges to the church. They estimate in my country that almost 50% of young people have mental health problems. And boy, in my country, and I think this is true in your country and others, when you deal with young people, you better listen to them carefully and see what they're really saying about their situation because it probably relates to mental health and be able to discern that. And then after pornography, I mean after mental health, is pornography. Pornography is a second or third greatest challenge. Not problem, not fear, not a threat. Please get that straight. But a challenge to the church. Do you realize how big porn is in the world? 87 million young people globally every day view pornographic videos off the internet. 87 million per day. Multiply that out with a month or a year, you've got a tragedy on your hands. With pornography, now you don't have a lot of stats in other countries, but in my country, and when I do take a step, my country can find in other countries, there's only maybe 3 or 4% difference in it. But with pornography, many studies indicate that 50 or 70 some percent of Christian men and 40 some percent of Christian women pursue pornography in the internet. This is not non believers, these are believers, evangelicals. Up to 70% of men and 40% of women pursuing 
pornography on the internet. Men and women, you cannot do that and have a consistent walk with Jesus Christ. You cannot do that and be an effective pastor or youth pastor or deacon or elder in the church. You can't. It's impossible because of what it does to your very soul when you're trying to minister. Pornography will destroy you. You need to be ready to counsel in these areas. Loneliness, anxiety, mental health, um, depression, and pornography. Now, what's the cause of some of this? Well, one is the cell phone. With the cell phone, we have connections. We're connecting with people, but we're not relating to people. You have a connection, but you don't have a relationship. And until we get back to where we're one-on-one, it's going to be very difficult to handle these issues of pornography, mental health, depression, loneliness, etc., in the church, in the body of Christ. Then second, there is so much travel. You would think with all the travel around the world now, in just a matter of hours, you can go from one continent to another continent and everything, that we'd have better relationships. We don't. We have connections and not relationships. Another reason is for the breakdown of the family in almost every culture of the world. Where the father, biblically, has not taken the spiritual leadership. And the fathers, even pastors of the churches and all who are fathers, do not reflect the purity sexually that is expressed in the Word of God, mainly because of pornography. And pornography will almost always, always lead to extramarital sexual affairs, even among church leaders, pastors, deacons, elders, with all your spiritual training and seminary, everything, it will lead you into immoral sexual relationships. And then the breakdown of healthy sexual relationships in the world between a husband and his wife, a wife and a husband, between the spouses. Because of the cell phone, the internet, the access to so much pornography, that it's just one click away. There's over, right now, probably almost three billion, now think of that, three billion pornographic web pages on the internet that in South Korea is just one click away. And when you have that much access, your young people, everyone, are turning to it. And the problem is, as a church, we don't seem to be addressing it. And I believe one reason is our leaders are afraid they might be exposed. Not all, but some. One of the greatest needs in the church globally is to put the family back together, to create healthy marriages between two spouses, and then to create incredible relationships with the parents and the children. In my research, it shows that a large percentage of evangelical churches don't address those two issues marital relationships, and relationships with their children. I would encourage you, as pastors listening, as Christian leaders, as deacons, as elders, as influencers in your culture in South Korea or anywhere in the world, I challenge you to check out your own relationship with your spouse. You know one of the best ways to do that? Ask your wife. Now, you might have to give her immunity, but just ask her. Say, honey, will you be very frank with me? How am I doing as a husband? 
And then listen to her. Don't speak up. Don't correct her. Don't interrupt her. Just listen to her. Don't give answer. No, no, that's not true. Just listen to her and then thank her. And then maybe a few weeks later, a month later, bring it back up and discuss it with her. You might be surprised what your spouse thinks. And I think any spouse would love for their husband to say, how am I doing? How am I doing as a husband, as a father, as a sexual partner? How am I doing in our relationship? Am I spend? ask her this, am I spending time with you? And if they say no, say, well, well, what do you mean? No, no. Just let them talk. And I guarantee you, you will get an earful. And much of it will bless you, and some of it will maybe discourage you some, but encourage you to pursue right relationships. Please take these things to heart. Why? Because the leaders of the church lies the hope of the world. I don't care if it's with pornography, loneliness, depression, whatever. If the church loses its stronghold here, the world will lose it. Please take these to heart. And thank you for letting me share with you in these sensitive areas. And if I get to Korea, I hope you and I can have coffee together, or tea if you prefer, and just catch up on things. Love you, appreciate you, and I really admire the church of South Korea. God bless.